Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. Will sanctions against China's chip industry ultimately hurt the United States the most? Over the past few years, the United States has steadily escalated its crackdown on China's semiconductor industry, imposing restrictions on everything from equipment and materials to the flow of talent. Initially, it was thought this would halt China's progress in high-end chips, but reality has quietly revealed a different answer. The most direct example is the Dutch lithography giant ASML. Its chief technology officer, Martin van den Brink, has publicly criticized this approach, saying that while it might restrict China in the short term, in the long term, it would be no less damaging to the United States and the entire industry than to China itself. ASML's president, Peter, repeatedly tried to persuade the White House that such actions would only cut off his company's main source of revenue, but to no avail. The United States' unwavering stance ultimately led the Netherlands to follow suit and implement the ban. The sanctions not only targeted ASML, but also directly disrupted the global semiconductor supply chain. Since 2018, the US blockade has caused many Japanese, South Korean, and Taiwanese companies with long-standing ties to China to reassess their export strategies, forcing some to reduce their supply of high-end equipment and core materials. However, the reality is more complex than expected. Some manufacturers in Germany and Japan have found that as long as their products are not subject to the ban, cooperation can continue. For example, companies like Tokyo Electron and Advantist continue to export low- and mid-end equipment to China. This some disconnected, some connected situation has created a coexistence of broken points and new channels in the global supply chain, gradually forming a new trade pattern. For ASML, this situation is particularly awkward. According to its financial report, the Chinese market accounted for approximately 14% of ASML's total revenue in 2022. More importantly, Despite the overall decline in global demand for semiconductor equipment, the Chinese market is still growing against the trend. While immersion DUV lithography systems are still allowed to be exported, China has demonstrated rapid technological substitution capabilities and a trend towards domestic equipment production. The U.S.'s forced cutoff of EUV lithography system supplies from the Netherlands effectively forces ASML to voluntarily abandon the world's fastest-growing market. This is not just a matter of short-term performance decline. In the long term, if China's domestically produced technology can replace EUV equipment, ASML may lose this market forever. ASML has been thrust into the spotlight because it is the only company in the world capable of mass-producing EUV lithography systems. This type of equipment plays a crucial role in advancing chip manufacturing processes to 7 nanometers and below. It integrates complex modules such as extreme ultraviolet light sources, high-precision mirrors, and vacuum systems and there is no other global supplier. However, despite failing to obtain EUV, China did not stop its progress. Instead, it strengthened the multiple patterning technology of its DUV lithography machines and optimized its processes to approach more advanced processes. TSMC, in its early years, also employed a similar approach producing chips close to high-end processes without the latest equipment. This technological overtaking 
approach opened another path for China's semiconductor industry. In fact, this self-imposed pressure has actually contributed to the overall acceleration of China's chip industry. SMIC has not only achieved mass production of 28 nanometers and 14 nanometers chips, but is also fully committed to 7 nanometers processes. Furthermore, Chinese manufacturers have made significant progress in etching machines, 5 nanometers plasma etching technology, localization of large silicon wafers, and EDA tools. Products from domestic equipment manufacturers have already entered mass production in some mid-range production lines, gradually conquering areas that were once considered difficult to break through in the short term. At the same time, the market share of several U.S. chip giants, Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD, is declining in China. The market adjustment didn't take long as Chinese companies continued to upgrade not only in semiconductors, but also in photovoltaics, new energy, and other fields, resulting in countercyclical growth. Industry experts point out that the chip industry is unique in that any blockade of any link triggers a complete restructuring of the entire upstream and downstream sectors. In the short term, U.S. sanctions have indeed put pressure on Chinese companies, especially in high-performance computing and cutting-edge manufacturing equipment. However, this also forces China to focus more resources on independent research and development. Data from multiple semiconductor market research institutions this year show that China's reliance on imports of semiconductor equipment and materials has significantly decreased over the past two years, and the proportion of domestically controlled equipment has gradually increased. The global market share distribution is also shifting, with the Chinese market playing an increasingly important pivotal role. From a global perspective, the sanctions have not halted China's technological development. Instead, they have created new cracks in the global semiconductor profit chain. Some say that technology is the most globalized industry, and the more blockades there are, the more likely it is to breed competitors. Reality has proven this statement to be not only an industry sentiment, but also a harsh reality.